if the only if the actual test was like this and not as conceptual as it is? Well, I would say that the test question should be similar to these. No, no, but like the whole calc everything in calculus. Oh. Yeah, but you gotta understand what you're doing. Yeah, but it's like but it's like uh so, uh, no test prep for this section. Yeah. Similar, these questions are similar to what the AP test is. Yeah, I saw that. your classwork from last class. Mr. Thompson, Lana told me to relay that you're her favorite teacher. Yeah, that's not what she was saying last period. Oh, really? She said, what did she say? What did she say, Mr. Thompson? I'm sure it was all for she asked me if I was the teacher of this class. Oh, she told me about that. It's because you asked her if she was a student. Yeah. So I think, I think but that was a that was a callback to a previous time. I can't help it if she can't keep up. One time she was in here this year, and I thought she was in a different section. So I said, "Are you in this class?" And she took it as like. A this, and so I asked her again today, just joking about the previous time, but she must not have remembered. <laughs> but you're her favorite teacher. That's for sure. <laughs> Thank you. <coughs> she probably just likes that Henry's in that class. No, I'm, I think it was this year. Oh, can I borrow a pencil? I keep forgetting to put my name on stuff. Thanks. <coughs> Okay, I am asking for the Euler's method worksheet from last class, so if I don't have that yet, Is it this one or this one? it's number 17. It says number 16, page 2. For Euler's method? Yeah. This is number 16, page 1 and 2. Yeah, yes, it's a Yeah, I already asked you to fix it. That's oh, why you I was know. not listening. <laughs> I can see that. Lincoln. <coughs> Let me give everybody just a minute more. <clears throat> Make sure you have that in. And today's handout's number 18. I think this one's already numbered for you. And <clears throat> just a heads up, this will be the last BC topic that we will do before your second quiz. So this is a B week. I will not see you on Friday. On Monday, I'll remind you of the BC stuff we did, and we'll review a little bit of AB stuff, um, and then move on to our second quiz. So, a quick reminder of the BC things we've done since Unit 1 is we have done ArcLink, which for the most part is memorizing a formula. We did Euler's method, which is what you just turned in. You can tell, see that that took a bunch of practice, but there's two staplers, guys. Uh, it takes a bunch of practice, but very little calculus needed. And then the third is going to be this logistics model. So this will be the last of the BC topics for the next one.
<clears throat> okay, so for logistic models, we need to talk about what they are and uh, some of the stuff you need to know about them. So logistics model growth is when the growth rate increases quickly at first but then slows as the population reaches what's called the carrying capacity. <clears throat> this is sometimes also called the limiting value. Carrying capacity and limiting value are the same thing. And <clears throat> honestly, the reason logs and logistics stuff is so common is that it often represents, or at least closely represents, uh, real world stuff. So I have no idea what this graph is supposed to represent, but if you're talking about population of something, it can't just go up forever. You can't have an infinity number of cows on the earth. You're going to run out of food, you're going to run out of space. At some point there's so many of them, there's a disease or whatever. So typically there is some max here and this is the limiting value. or <clears throat> carrying capacity, whatever you want to call it. Now, some of the stuff about this that you need to know is, just like how I read here, the growth rate increases quickly at first and then slows the closer it gets to this limiting value. So there's a point right here where it's switching from the growth <coughs> rate is increasing so it's increasing the whole time but the rate that it's increasing is faster and faster during this time followed by the growth rate decreasing so it's still it is still increasing but the rate that is increasing slows down so you can see the slope here is much closer to zero. The slope here is uh, much more positive. <clears throat> um, you may also notice that when the growth rate is increasing, it is concave upward. When the growth rate is decreasing, it's concave downward. So what is this point, the special point where it switches from concave up to concave down? Okay, so you need to write in that this is called an inflection point. And <clears throat> I think there's one or two questions I use this on, and I don't think you had to use it on one of them, but in case you want to take the same approach that I did, inflection points can be found when the second derivative is zero or undefined. Okay, for this value, we call this L. This is the limiting value. For this point, this inflection point, it's going to occur at some time, depends on the question, but what do you think the y value of this inflection point is going to be? L over 2. Good. It's exactly half of the limiting value. So if you know what the carrying capacity is or the limiting value is, this inflection point, the y value is at half of that. And again, that kind of should make sense because this length and this length look the same. Okay, so what these will look like as calculus questions <clears throat> is there's two typical ways to write these, and both of these are actually the same thing. You could just algebraically manipulate one to make it into the other, but we use both of these often enough that we will want to memorize them. So sometimes we'll get that the rate is equal to some constant k times y times 1 minus y over L, where L is the limiting capacity. Or if you want to rearrange that, you could do k over L times y, parentheses L minus y. Now, one of the, probably the very first question that I ask you to do on your own is a multiple choice question asking you to just try to match up the one that makes sense. 
So one thing as I worked through this the other day, bless you, that I noticed about all of these that I thought was helpful, if this is dy dt, for it to be one of these logistical models, you're going to need to have y in two other places. Even in this form, if it's dy dt, it means you need to have y in two different places. So on that multiple choice question, just looking at that is going to help you out quite a bit. Okay, <clears throat> so starting off super easy here. Here is a differential equation that is in the logistic model format. So, which <clears throat> first thing you need to do is figure out, does this look more like the first form that I gave you in that box or the second form? Okay, and my suggestion to you, until you feel like you have this memorized, is make yourself write that form down next to it. That's the same form we just put up in the box. Because then you can just kind of glance at this and you can pick apart the information you needed. If you needed to know K, well, K is right here. K must be 6. If you wanted to know the limiting value, that's also just sitting there. What do you think the limiting value is? In this question, it's 3. So sometimes just knowing the form of it is enough to know where that answer is going to come from. And then the point of inflection is going to have a Y value of what? Very good. Half the limiting value. We put that up in the picture. So if I want to know the x value of the point of inflection, I have to do more work. But if I just want the y value, that's pretty easy. OK, now this one, question two, is the other format. So once again, I think as you work through this, you should write the format down that you think it is. To me, this one looks like k over ly times l minus y. Now you might say, I don't see division here, but just understand, I'm not saying that k is 2, I'm not saying that l is 2, I'm saying whatever k divided by l is simplifies to 2. But if it's in this format, here's the limiting value, l. So what is the limiting value in this question? 16. And if you know what the limiting value is, <clears throat> then you should know halfway to that is where it's that concavity is switching. At y equals 8. Okay, okay with those two? Okay. And Um, I think the note on the bottom of this page is important enough to go ahead and read. It says these two things will answer most of the questions you'll see on the AP exam for logistics. One, being able to state what the maximum value of a logistic function. So knowing that's the limiting value and knowing how to extract that out of the differential equation. And two, knowing um, when it switches from the growth rate increasing to the growth rate decreasing is when the concavity changes slash when the second derivative changes from positive to negative. So apparently these are the two big things, <coughs> types of questions that come out of this. Okay, so once again, question three, do a couple more together here. If you recognize that this looks like this format, let's see, this one looks like the ky times one minus y over l then what's the carrying capacity? Right here, it's 100. It can, sometimes it can be quite that easy. And when does it occur? 50. When what's 50? Okay, when y is 50. Not when x is 50, but when y is 50. Most of the time they're gonna ask about x, but for whatever reason, this one was y. So you get a question like number four. Think about which one of the two forms it looks most like. Write it next to it. Except that's not the one. This one would be the k over ly times one l minus y. Again, I'm just copying that off the front page. 
So it looks like k over l is 4, not super helpful, but the limiting value is supposed to be right here. Limiting value l is also known as carrying capacity. So that's the max value. That's the value it can never reach for whatever reason. It can get close to 7 or approach 7, but it can never reach 7. So make sure you're paying attention here. This isn't the max value it occurs at. It's the max rate. So remember, it goes up quickly at first, and then it goes up slowly after. So that inflection point in the middle, the y value comes from half of the carrying capacity. It fits exactly in the middle. OK. Everybody still OK? All right. Um, so let's look at 5, 6, and then I'll have you try question 1, and then I'll let you work at your pace. OK, so here's one of the forms. If you solve this differential equation, I'm not sure why you would, but it could be solved as this. So remember to solve a differential equation. Really, the only way you know to do that right now is separation of variables. So if you get all the y stuff on one side, all the t stuff on one side, integrate both sides, they're telling us that this is what that function would look like. Um, okay, but that doesn't really have anything to do with question five. So question five, here's a good real world example of knowing just a little bit of information. Understanding the question type allows us to um, calculate some stuff. Okay, so the rate of change of the number of people entering, entering a state park is modeled by a logistics differential equation. DP over DT. What do you think the P stands for? Okay, our number of people, the population of people in the park. And what do you think T stands for? Okay, yeah. Um, I know the carrying, the capacity of the state park is 2,500 people. So 2,500 is what variable? L, the limiting, limiting value slash carrying capacity. So I know L is 2,500. They tell me at a specific time, the number of people in the park is 1,200. And at that instant, we know it's increasing at a rate of 100 people per hour. Create a differential equation that could represent the situation. So we've got these two forms on the front page. And I don't know, we just pick one. We have one that looks like this. Now, I probably should make a couple changes to this before I use it on this question. What's inconsistent here? Right, so on the front page, this was dy dt. So if you're talking about y's, you should expect it to be y's here and here. If this is dp dt, we should probably put p's, where p represents the number of people. So I already know L, 2,500. I know L is 2,500 again. Okay, so P is like the variable in this question. So instead of Y's, there's P's. So the last mystery to this question is how big is K? Well, that's why they give us this extra information here. When there's 1,200 people, so when P is 1,200. The rate is 100 people per hour. And the rate needs to be plugged in for the derivative. Remember, derivative means rate. So that gives you a formula that only is missing one variable, K. And I'll spare you the arithmetic, but you'll probably want to use a calculator when it comes to it. Um, K ends up being. What did I get? K is, I think, 25 over 156, if I'm looking at my work correctly. And that's the last thing to plug in. 
So when you plug this in for k, this becomes your answer. Here is a differential equation. Um, and when you take 25 over 156 and divide it by 156, uh, or 2500 times, times by p. Okay, I may have misspoke on that. I don't know if I wrote down the actual value of k. But you end up with this. So that's what they're looking for. So all I really did is I wrote down this form that we're going to memorize. I plugged in the stuff I knew, like L, 2500. I temporarily plugged in this many people in this rate for P and P prime. That allowed me to solve for K. Again, I think this might actually not be the right value of K. But then once I knew what K was, I could take K divided by 2500, simplify that and make it look a little bit nicer. But otherwise, um, uh, well, this is just a different form. So. Are you guys okay with how I'm piecing that together? Yeah. Does it matter if you switch forms? Mm -mm. In the no, you could do either way. You'll see, like, on the multiple choice, you know, they'll all of the choices will probably be one form or another form. So you just have to. Okay, and then question six. I like this one because this kind of goes back when we talked about like slope intercept. I didn't, you probably didn't expect me to say that. What is slope intercept form? Okay, why do we learn slope intercept form? It is easy to graph. Why is it easy to graph? Right, if you're, if you're familiar with the form, you should instantly know the y-intercept and the slope, right? So that's the idea to this too. These have standard forms. So if it's not in a standard form, can you tell me what the carrying capacity is to this? Not quickly. That's why we like to have our standard forms. So for this question, we could, we're just going to make it look like one of the standard forms. So what we could do is uh, we could factor out a y. You got this down, Diego? You got this down already? Okay, and then if I try to make it look like one of the forms, um, to me this looks kind of like this one. So, it's not quite there yet. I've got a Y here, got a Y here. Uh, this is supposed to be L, but there's still some, L is not four fifths. They've done something else here. What else could I do to this to get it closer to that? Okay, so we could say four fifths and one over 150 have a four fifths in common. So you could actually factor that out as well, not just the y. And now, if I start to compare these, four fifths y, this would be a one. Um, and this is like y over l. Okay, so what is K in this problem? Oh, this should be 120, you're right. If you factor out a four-fifths, then it leaves behind a 120. Okay, what is K in this question? Right, it's in the, it's in the standard format now. What is L in this question? 120. And that's what you actually, carrying capacity is L. But if it's not in the standard format, you might be able to manipulate a little bit and put it in standard format. I factored out a Y. 
and I factored out a four fifths. And then it was in one of these two formats that we look at. Okay, I would like you to do one question on your own before we talk about it on the board, and that is question one. So give this one your best shot, and at the very least, figure out where you might get stuck. I will also add that I bet a lot of you get part of the answer correct, but not the whole answer correct. So, see if that gives you a hint at the end. So here was your differential equation. I just copied it down. Here's the form that I think it matches up to. Since I've got it right on top of each other, I can see that the carrying capacity is 4,000. So carrying capacity slash limiting value is the absolute max. So Y, whatever Y represents here, has to stay under 4,000. It can't ever reach that. Okay, but that's not the whole question. The question is, for what values of Y is the population increasing at a decreasing rate? So remember it goes, it's increasing the whole time, but it's increasing at an increasing rate until you get to the inflection point, and then it's increasing at a decreasing rate after. So increasing at a decreasing rate, they're talking about this time, so here's the fourth, thousand at the carrying capacity but it's also from right here and what is this y value right it's half of four thousand which is two thousand so starting at y equals two thousand and as you get closer to four thousand it's the rate is still increasing but it becomes slower and slower and slower that's all that this going to So um, most of this unit, I would say, is about memorizing the two forms and just trying to extract the right information out of this. Um, I do want you to now start moving at your own pace, but I will caution you. I would probably save question two for the very end. Question two is, 
has three parts and it's an entire page. Um, it's definitely the hardest of the questions. Part B is pretty long. So I would say question two to the very end and I would say question five right before that. Five is not a great question. There's nothing wrong with it, it's just not a great question. So I would do all the questions, come back and then do five and then do number two. Okay. And again, you'll probably want a calculator, so if you need to borrow one of mine, they're up here. I don't even care about Iowa. I really don't. 
why you need to stay on tap so you don't keep taking and have credit. Mm -hmm. So you can't be the Because that be the maximum is too Some of these questions should be very quick. One. Yeah, I would do question two at the end just because it's long and not necessarily related to this topic. And five is just not the best question to ask. You'll see when you get there. So do the others first. The others are very representative of what would be fair for you on a quiz. Um, well, one funny that you should ask. I have not talked about this poster here with y'all yet, have I? Have you? No. Okay, so I've had this poster for years, but I didn't get it laminated until recently. This shows, I mean, it's the same thing that would be on the College Board website. It shows you what all the units cover. So units one through eight is what you did in AB. But it also shows, I know I have this on our class website too, how much of that will be on your BC test. You can notice that these in purple, these are BC topics. We haven't done any part of unit 9 or 10 yet, but I've started checking off the ones we have done. We've done these three, integration by parts, partial fractions, and improper intervals. We have done arc length. We did Euler's method last class, and now we've done logistic methods, or logistic models. And so how much of this will be on your AP exam? I don't know. This with Euler's method, with a couple of these other things from AD, like slope fields, uh, verifying solutions to differential equations, just a couple of AD things in there, will be about six to nine percent of your BC. How much is this one topic? I don't know. Probably two or three questions would be my guess. Is the exam very repetitive or no? AP exam? Yeah. Like in the sense that there's a lot of kind of similar questions or no? Well, it shouldn't be too unsimilar than the AP test you did last year. Okay. When you take your AP exam this year, 60% of it will be AB topics. Those 60%, the AB students will be taking the exact same questions. And 40% of yours will come from new stuff. So 40% could be partial fractions, integration by parts, logistic models, Euler's method, but the, also those last two units we haven't even started yet. So. That 40% most likely be mostly 9 and 10. I don't know. Nine and ten make up a total of. So these topics we've already talked about, they will make up the rest of that 40%. Because the rate is But honestly, other than the two questions I told you to save for the end, most of these questions are pretty quick and pretty easy if you know the format. They can't do this. You have to have at least two You're right. You're right. That's what I was trying to say. That's how I can help narrow that down. My fault. I forgot. I am very slow today. I think it's just the day. Might help if you do some jumping jacks. Honestly, probably, probably. <laughs> I swear I'm not usually this tired. Not anymore. It's not pre count anymore. I didn't take that. Maybe I was like falling asleep.
Anybody need help with number three or number four, maybe? Their Chromebook, why you had my more? original uh, that I had yesterday and stuff and every other day. Uh, and so I went to the tech office and they just like replaced it. Just, they moved the new one. And so I guess this That's is nice. my Chromebook. I was just confused by it. It was just like, it said What's it something wrong with yours? Lost or it was an older one. I guess. I was really confused because they like it, it said it was reported as lost or stolen, and it was right. that that way they force you to bring it down there. Yeah, so I was just like I heard about that last year, but I heard the reverse. Like seniors were taking their Chromebooks down that were like pretty decent, and then they were getting old ones. They were forcing older ones on them, but I don't know. Honestly, I'm kind of glad I got this because it runs like at least slightly better. Because the other one took like a billion years to run. And it could barely handle like three tabs. Oh. The okay, um, of course, I do have the answers on the website, so please make sure you check before you consider yourself done today. If there's any of them you want me to look at and help you out with, just tell me. Again, this is a B week, so I won't see you guys on Friday. And my plan on Monday is to give you a couple more of these question types for a little more practice. I feel like these are harder than the arc link and Euler's method. And so we'll do a little bit more practice on this on Monday and a little bit of AB practice on Monday. If you want to know what we're doing next time. Are we practicing? Hmm? Or what AB stuff are we practicing? Um, I don't know. Just something. I mean, we have to. We need to review all the AB at some point this year. So, I just try to sprinkle in a little bit of AB to like, because otherwise we need to like be quizzing this stuff faster. So I'm just trying to give you more calendar days to absorb the new information. I wouldn't mind a little bit more on related rates. We will. That was probably the problem with related rates is like related rates. Reviewing related rates would be great, but it's not going to help you at all with this. Yeah, exactly. Whereas if we, well, this specifically, there's not too much. But the handout I gave you the other day that we only did four questions on, that's a lot of integration. Practicing just doing integration is just going to help you out the whole year. So we might do that since you already have that. I don't know. We'll review everything at some point. Yeah, 
So yesterday I thought it was a spirit day. So you had on like in Miami shirt. Yeah. Walking down the hallway. And then there's a kid, like one or two kids behind you also had on a shirt in Miami. Yeah. Yeah. He was sitting right next to a guy and his yeah. other class had a Miami shirt huh. on. I don't know. I don't know. Sure. Um, oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Do I use this thing? What's the I don't know. I don't know why they get I don't even know why they get Look at the forms. Where are the forms on the front right? Yeah. 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 It represents the value it approaches as time approaches. So it's, just, it's, a, it's the same way, it's the same question, just with math symbols. That's what I was saying. Some of these questions can be super fast.
Nobody needs help. Finish your work and then you can't sleep in class. Thank you. 
three. Three could be true. Yeah. four. Yeah. The inflection point will have to change. But it's not. But isn't the point of the reflection for Yeah. Because if you were at the equation, I don't know that it's like the something you can do with the vector of the equation for it. Oh. Yeah, it's still 69. Like, okay. Yeah, I think it's the first Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what is the picture? Like, back to the orange. This one is growing fast. So it can just like shift over this. Right. Yeah. So this can be it here. Right. It could be. Yes. That's why, I, yeah, I know. That's why I'm not thinking about it. Okay. okay, that makes sense. Yeah. 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 Also, the wording of it kind of weird. Because it says the maximum rate of change occurs at P is zero. So, yeah. Well, the maximum rate of change is right here. So that's when it's growing the fastest. So it was a particular question where this just happened to be a start. That's impossible. So that means you can't have it. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. I thought he was saying that there could be a case where it's not. Yeah, so. I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think so. I did. I did. I did. I did. I did. I did. Good challenge for you. I know. Maybe you should check the answers to make sure you're still on the right track before you spend another 10 minutes on it. Okay, sure. Thank you. 
Okay, I'm done bugging y'all for questions, but of course, please let me know if you find something I can help with. Closely models. And write it down. Okay, except this is equal to P over D. So instead of using Y, it's usually P. Go ahead and set it equal to dp over dp also. Put the full equation there. Okay, well, <coughs> they give you some of the information. You should know what L is. Okay, so everywhere there's an L, plug in a 2000. And then the last hurdle is you need to figure out what K is. If you know what K is, you can plug that in and then figure out which one of those is the same. And since you know there's 200 people when it's increasing at a rate of 400 people per hour. Plug in 200 for all the P's, 400 for the DPDT, and that's going to allow you to solve that case. And then plug it back in. I don't know what I did. I just used the equation for the first page. <laughs> Hey, why are you talking about B? No, like, no, 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 like, the B in the equation, like, T equals zero. Yes. <laughs> Two, can I explain 2B to you? Yeah. Sure. I'm like that can be on the quiz. Uh, I'm afraid I don't know. it's not going to be on the... It depends. You know? don't know. It depends. It's, it, it all depends on how nice y'all are to me. Okay, so you've got... You, you've got a differential equation. You could separate the variables, put y's on one side, t's on the other side. We really appreciate your help. Thank you so much. Well, we love you, Mr. Thompson. Are you being sarcastic? No, I'm no, no, we're being for real. We're being serious. Separate the variables, integrate both sides, plug in 0, 20% to solve for c, plug it back in, and you know why. Separation of variables. Separate the variables so you can integrate both sides. What well, makes the question 
kind of a pain is that the integration has to be integration by parts. It's by parts? What did you I said say? It was partial fractions. Oh yeah, I meant partial fractions. Oh, okay. It could be. I got y equals 1.4e to the 7 fifths t all over 5 plus 2e to the 7 fifths t. This is why I told y'all to save this one for the end, because it's kind of messy. Also, they give you like a, almost an entire page to do that one step. So. Would you use the equation to calculate the I would use the t equals zero at t equals zero twenty percent to solve for c. Solve c. Now you realize you shouldn't be plugging in twenty. You should be plugging in point two zero. Yes. I'm gonna look at it in a minute. I I honestly I only started it and then I quit it. So. Oh, okay, I get it. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. You figured out number three? Wait, number three? How do you get I'm messing with you. Wait, so what do you find? starting it so okay. that's gonna be real embarrassing if I still finish before you
If I do what? Well, I'm trying to take a shortcut, so we'll see how that goes. I probably should. I just I kind of just quickly grab stuff I needed in my backpack for school at the beginning of the year because I just completely forgot to actually like buy stuff and prepare. I think I'm about halfway done. Halfway already? No, it's it's the same like it's like if you bring out if you bring out all of the other things. Not that. Oh, I get it. Okay, cool. I don't know. I don't know. I might be done. My answer looks different though. I gotta see if it's official. Okay, let me give you a tip on 2B. Okay, on question 2B, they give you an initial time. They want you to find y is a function of t. So y equals what in terms of t? Just t's in here. This is what your answer is supposed to look like. So how do you go from a derivative to just a function? You integrate. Before you integrate, you should separate the variables, right? So you could get all the y stuff on one side, all the t stuff on one side, so that you can integrate both sides. What could be challenging is the integration is partial fractions, which is probably a good practice. What is this going to be used for? Right? This is going to help you solve for the initial condition c. If you plug in 0 for t, the rate is uh, 0.20. Make sure you're not plugging in 20, but instead do 0.20. You could do that, solve for C, then finish solving for Y. Or, there's a much more streamlined version, which is what?
You don't know? Remember, if it's in this format, it would solve to that. How would you get a B? Use, use the initial condition to solve for B. Plug point 20 in for when T equals 0. Then you can solve for B. And then the rest you already had. Now, I will say, I did it that way, and my answer looks different than the answer they provided. But I did graph them both, and they are equivalent. So. Will it be on the AP exam? I don't believe so, but I can't promise that yet. It's probably your entire AP exam. It's just one of those. It's actually pretty easy if you know that form. Because you already should know L. Uh, solving for K doesn't take very long and then plug in that point they give you to solve for B, piece it all together. But more power to you if you figured it out without that reminder. Oh, oh, we're almost out of time. Okay. Please finish practicing the rest of those before class next time. I will give you a little bit more practice on this skill on Monday. I feel like it was harder than the other two BC skills, so we'll do that. I'll remind you of some of the AP stuff, or AB stuff that you will need to know. But today's puzzle is this, slightly different. We've got just a couple minutes, so I have to go pretty quick. What do you mean by mistake? There's something wrong with these people. Oh, okay. Wait, is it the eyebrow? The eyes are like reversed. Yeah. Yeah, the eyes are upside Oh, I lied. We got 10 minutes. I was looking at those. Yeah, the eyes are upside down, aren't they? Yeah, there. Is that it? Yep. It's one. The eyes and the lips. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Are you sure? Maybe the ears. No, the ears are fine. The ears are The eyes are upside down. The lips are upside down. The ears are normal with the lips. The eyes and the lips. Let's check. So basically, you want to write the equation. Airline's fine. Airline's fine. Okay, you ready for me to flip it over so you can see? Please. Yeah. Three, two, one. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't believe that's the same image, just turn your head upside down. Yeah. Eyes and the lips. Yep. Eyes and the lips are the only things I saw. Yep. Everything else is fine. What, this is not up to your standard of puzzles for the day? Yours are usually like way harder. Well, I try to get different kinds. I wish y'all would send me puzzles so I didn't have to try to find them all the time. Y'all did this one already, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh. Oh, I have one other video. This is the only public high school. Here. Here. I'm not going to Springfield. Yeah, so you're going to the school. You go to school by the building you're next to.
You know if October 3rd is uh, an AA? No, but it should be on the school calendar. I don't have the school calendar printed out. If you go to the school website, fayar.net, and find the class calendar, the AB schedule, it should say. It's just I got this uh, honors college this holiday. Just so gotta figure it out. How hard do you think it is to get the fellowship? I have no idea. That's, that changes, I think, over time, so I have no idea. This year was like, it was like 20,000 a year. It was just like way more than the